Why did I miss? This is a burning question whenever we shoot, particularly when we're doing rapid shot drills and we get that low left shot, we get that high shot, we get just get that low right, whatever. And then the question is, okay, what, what was the root cause on that? Was it, was it a trigger mechanic issue? Was it uh, bringing the gun down? Was it a flinch? Was it milking the gun? So there's a lot of explanations out there as far as just looking at the chart, like if it's low left, you probably did this, or too much finger on the trigger, what have you. But really it's a lot more complicated than that. And let me share with you a bit of a setup I did to try to really, really deeply diagnose what's going on in live fire. So as you can see in the setup here, I got some C-stands, I got mirrors, I'm using a, just a basic iPhone at 240 frames per second, slow-mo. And here's the results I get, and I have it in this coaching app. So let's take a look at this coaching app and see what is really going on here. So as you can see in the timer, as you can see above me, at set at zero, the gun is perfectly aligned. And I picked this particular time, because check out this, uh, let me take a step back. What I got here, I got a side view, I got the top view, and I got the target, all in one, just by the way of having this, this set up. You can do this too, it's not that big of a deal, it's a custom made thing. If you like it, comment, maybe we can make something like that. Uh, you know, buy things in quantity, get it out there, if this takes foothold. But right now, it's just a wackadoodle job I'm doing. So let's me go a little bit forward, boom, it goes off, bam. See that shot right there? See right there? Boom, there's a bullet hole. All right, so we can safely say that from these two alignments right here, all right, all right, that's relative alignments. Boom, I, I cooked that off, that is dead on. All right, so let's take a look. What happened on the next shot? This is a quick note to you, that mirror's a little warped. I don't quite have that much of a, of a bend. <laughs> so that's not quite accurate, but it's, I still get some information of the recoil. So let's take a look at the target on some of the next shot. Boom, okay, next shot, low left. Low left, see that? Boom. All right, not good, not good, not good. Why is that? What we can tell is right at zero is when it breaks, all right, in the red zero. You can see I'm a little bit lower. I'm a little bit lower right off the bat at break. But let's go upstream just a little bit and see where the gun was just a few hundredths of a second. Mind you, this is 240 frames per second, so every frame is going to be uh, four thousandths of a second, 4.2 thousandths of a second. And also note that this timer is, I assume it's for 30 frames per second, so it's gonna be an eight times difference. So right now, if we start from the boom right there and we go back a few frames to right there, okay, that says 30, that's actually 3.7 hundredths of a second. So about just about four hundredths of a second is that motion where I was good, I was lined up, and like a total jack wagon, boom, I dipped it, I cooked it off, and let's take a look at this. Simultaneously, I, boom, see that? I was good, I had this little bit of weird action here. This weird action. Okay, now this is what's fascinating on this. So what is the exact deficiency of why that went low left? Was it a trigger mechanic issue? Well, if we take a look at the bigger picture here and just what my body does um, up in that, like we take, let's see how I'm just going, and mind you, this is like 400 of a second. So it's really, really quick, right before ignition, right before ignition. This is more of a upper body structure, almost a stance issue. Almost, almost an upper turret flinch. Not really a localized one, not a trigger mechanic issue, which can be uh, local with a, with a loose grip. Not um, uh, healing, of course, where it, would go, where it would go high. And also not this milking of the gun, really a co-contraction, which is really common if you don't have a proper, proper grip of isolation. This is just an upper body flinch. Now, I'm just showing this to you as one example of diagnosing a deficiency in your live fire. And this is quite, quite fascinating. And when you're dealing with, if you're an instructor and dealing with a student, an apparatus like this, I don't know, it could be something for that, for that real refinement to know exactly what is going on. What I can tell you, and what I take away from this, is that it is absolutely not as simple as just looking at the classic little chart and thinking, oh, it went low left. Um, you know, whatever recommendation is there. Uh, there's a lot of reasons. I've looked at myself, I've looked at others. I have actually done some milking. Okay, I actually watched very much a localized contraction like this. I have seen my whole body just settle down. It's completely settled, but it was more of a stance deficiency where the gun settles low left, 
all right, or low rent or low is high. All right, I didn't have enough visual awareness to, to correct it. Off the range, you know, of course, you know, you can use our good old cert pistol. We want to get nice, clean dots, not dashes. Um, and quite frankly, a lot of people just have deficiency with just trigger control. I mean, if you want to cert, just go back 20 yards, go single hand so your strong hand can't mask a deficiency, and go ahead and rattle off some shots and get those nice, clean, nice, clean dots, not those ugly dashes. But when you get to recoil, there is that other element of returning the muzzle down to a consistent location. And that's where some other deficiencies can illuminate. Clean up that stuff off the range. And then when you get to the range, even though you probably don't have a setup like this, you can at the very least take your iPhone, take a little stand. I have one right here. Ah. It's a simple, cheap one, just like this. Okay, boom, do a rapid shot drill, and then watch that muzzle and see, um, with, at least from the side view, to see what's happening, if there's a final little dip, or if there's any something weird going on. And then, I don't know, if you want a bigger apparatus like this, uh, like I said, let us know in the comments, because I think there's some real value here of really unearthing what the heck is going on when we're shooting, so we can really, really, really hone in our skills Bring that muzzle down to a consistent location, and really whatever we, we, we see, we can hit with our index shooting. And if there's a little more sighted fire, we keep that muzzle locked in, the sights locked in, break shot, cook off round, hit target with minimal deviation.